Welcome to the weekly sermon at Milford Hills United Methodist Church. We are glad you are taking some time to worship with us through this video. Our mission at Milford Hills is to love, serve, and live as Christ. We live out this mission through our ministries to all ages, from younger children to older adults, and in all places, including right here in Salisbury, North Carolina, and all across our state and throughout the world. If you are looking for a church home, we invite you to join us on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. right here in our sanctuary. Or you can join us on our YouTube channel or at milfordhillsumc.org slash worship. Our website has all sorts of information about our congregation, our ministries, and our missions. We pray this week's sermon connects you to God in some way and encourages you on your path of discipleship with Jesus Christ. Friends, it's a joy to be with you this morning. Um, on behalf of Bishop Carter and the cabinet, I uh, bring you greetings and joy and uh, appreciate the opportunity to, to share and to be with you. Uh, it's interesting when uh, 30 years of life and ministry is kind of compressed onto one little paragraph, and uh, just in each of those sentences, uh, you know, part of my life, part of my ministry kind of bubbled up to the surface, so even thank you for that little memory road there, so I appreciate that. Um, friends, uh, I'm looking forward to uh, being with you, sharing with you. Uh, at annual conference this past year, I uh, presented uh, just kind of a framework for what healthy churches and vital churches uh, might look like. And uh, Jim asked me to share uh, that this morning. I've uh, sort of turned it into a, a, a sermon. I hope you hear God's spirit. God's spirit is uh, what's driven everything that's here, everything that I get to share this morning. Uh, and I hope you'll see in the midst of that, that uh, at the heart of, of healthy and vital and sustainable churches is the movement of the Holy Spirit. And I uh, already felt that this morning uh, with you all uh, in worship and have seen it over the last few years as I've uh, been able to work with you and around you and I've seen uh, your interaction with Transformation Journey and we appreciate uh, the time and the effort uh, that you're putting into that and uh, really look forward to seeing what the Spirit's going to do in and with uh, and through your community of faith that's here. Uh, as we begin this morning, I just invite you into that place, uh, just as you were earlier invited to this place of, of prayer where you can connect and, um, with the Spirit in the way that you do. Uh, you can, some people uh, look up, some people uh, lift their hands up, some people fold them in their lap, some people bow their heads, close their eyes. Uh, oftentimes we do something physical to kind of uh, give ourselves a signal that something different uh, might happen and we make ourselves available to that. So whatever works for you for that, I invite you into that space uh, and I'll, I'll begin our time together in prayer. So let us pray. Holy Spirit, come. In this moment, as we get to share with you and with one another, bear fruit through each of us while you continually produce fruit in us, as you do that together with us, as we seek to faithfully be the body of Christ embodied in our world. Lord, come and bring us along. We love you and we thank you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm going to begin uh, with... Uh, scripture from, from John 15, starting with uh, um, verse 5. Um, probably some familiar uh, words. It's this imagery of Jesus being um, the vine and us being the branches. It's kind of the, the framing issue, and you'll see that in the imagery and uh, the things that I share this morning. Um, so I lift up this, uh, the word of God to you. Jesus is speaking, and he says this. Yes, I am the vine, and you are the branches. Those who remain in me, and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. Such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned. But if you remain in me, and my words remain in you, 
You may ask for anything you want, and it will be granted. When you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples, and this brings great glory to my Father. I have loved you even as the Father has loved me, so remain in my love. Friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, this morning, I get a chance to share just a picture, some images of how we together as the body of Christ might know when God is growing a healthy and a vital and a sustainable faith community. For myself, I just turned 55 years old, and I'm trying to stay healthy and vital as an individual. And over the years, I have also discovered that my body is not in the perfect uh, place of health and vitality. In fact, I've discovered over the years that you know, I have some ongoing health issues. As I manage those, my primary care doctor is aware of every single one of them. He's in conversation with me. I meet with him a couple of times a year. He farms me out to other specialists, and he keeps a, an eye on my entire system, my entire health of my body as a whole. In spite of um, some chronic migraines that I have, I just discovered earlier this year that I have uh, AFib as well. It's very minor. It's not a big deal. I have some gastro system things here and there like most of us, most of us do. A little touch of asthma. Um, in my recent checkup, he mentioned all of those things uh, and made sure that I was, had the right kind of medication and uh, was focused with me on making sure I was living a life and working on trying to get healthier. In the meantime, he continues to connect me to all of my other doctors for my overall health. And what's interesting about my doctor too, he every once in a while asks about my spiritual life. He knows that I'm a pastor and this last time he said, how's your prayer life, Rob? And I, we talked about that for a minute, and he goes, you know it matters. And I said, yes, sir, I, I think it does. Our spiritual health matters just as much as our physical health. As you can imagine, as we project that out to us as a community of faith, the same is true in our church systems. Our church systems also have a, a sense of health to them. Um, and health and a sense of vitality and, and over time a sense of sustainability. So that's what I want to talk about this morning. What, what does that look like as we start interacting with and as we start to be and act as and live as the body of Christ as a healthy and vital faith community? Well, we start with the rootedness in the living Christ, In the natural world, a branch is literally and utterly dependent on a vine for its life and for all the nourishment that it receives. Without that vine, the branch cannot survive, much less be able to bear any fruit. In John 15, Jesus uses this imagery to convey a very profound spiritual reality for each one of us. We, as his followers, must remain deeply connected to him. For he is the source of our spiritual life and vitality. If we are to be a vital and sustainable church, it is essential that Christ remains at the very center of our existence. What's interesting is I did some research on this word vital, and and the root of the word vital means simply life. In modern use, vitality is defined as something that has remarkable energy and liveliness. It's something that's necessary to the existence of life itself, and it's something that is indispensable and essential. As we pull that into the church context, a life with Christ infuses transformative vitality into our congregations. For me, in the work that I do in church development, our focus is on cultivating vital and sustainable local churches in all forms. In fact, this idea of vital and sustainable churches, that's literally my job description. 
is to help churches understand what that looks like and to recognize that uh, vital churches are not just the things we do, it's who we are and whose we are and how we live that out each and every single day. I get to talk to churches about what it looks like to be a healthy church system. You all have experienced that through transformation journey. Um, The whole purpose of it wasn't just to fix one small part of your church, it was to look at your church as a whole. And what does that look like to be followers of Christ each and every day? Over the last few years, I've been able to visit and consult with hundreds of churches. And I've come to discover uh, that I can just know I feel it when I am in a vital church. When I spend time in such communities, the energy there is palpable. The vision for the kingdom is clear. And the transformation of people and the community around them is visible. It's these characteristics that differentiate a routine gathering of people from a vibrant, life-filled faith community. Sometimes I I stop for gas as I'm going, and I didn't this morning, but sometimes I stop for gas when I'm near a church that I'm visiting, and one time I was visiting, it's a very large church, and I stopped at this gas station literally within sight of the church itself, and I said, you know, I'm not super familiar with this church, I'm not sure where it is, could you tell me where it is? And the person at the gas station said, thought for a minute, says, you know, I'm not really familiar with that one. This is the same church that I walked out the door and could see the driveway across the street. In contrast, I've been to others and stopped at other gas stations, and immediately I've heard things like, oh, you mean the one that is always helping out at my son's school? Oh, you mean the one uh, that is always hosting something for the community? There's kids running around there all the time. Oh, you mean the one that has all those people that are constantly out and in the community um, Three of them are my neighbors. They're doing some amazing things. I'm so glad they're here. People often ask me, so what makes other churches so vital? If you go back to that definition, what they're really asking is, what makes them so energetic? What makes them so necessary, important, and essential? In a vital faith community, everything about their church's life is centered on trying to be just a little bit more like Jesus. They are focused on connecting to a life with Christ, and they are producing fruit that is feeding others. Now think about this for a minute. A church that, a tree that produces fruit, like, like an apple tree, it doesn't produce that fruit to feed itself. It produces that fruit to feed others, to feed other creatures, to feed the ground, to give life and nourishment to other things. The church is so very similar. For me, I like to think about churches not as a group of people that are getting together to talk about their faith or to live out their faith in that way, Um, For me, something that's even more moving and has more energy and more life is to think about church instead as a spiritual movement. A spiritual movement is about people growing on the vine with Christ who are cultivating disciples and prioritizing the leading of the Spirit in all they are and all that they do. In the midst of their church, it isn't about programs or property. It's about a vibrant, faithful community with leaders who are intent on being led by Jesus. It's this singular focus that makes a church a movement instead of just an organization of people who are going to church. For me, it's no wonder that when we look to see if something has life, we look to see if it has movement. And ultimately, enough movement that we see will equate to healthy growth. That's why for us and in my ministry in our office, with congregational vitality and church development, we are committed to noticing the creative movement of the Holy Spirit in the world around us. We go looking for churches where the Spirit is alive, where we can see it at work, 
and see the Spirit impacting people and communities. And as we do, we then begin to nurture existing congregations to vibrant renewed life, uh, renewed life, and also uh, are able to create new faith communities where there isn't one or where one is needed. Our goal is to foster vital, sustainable, inclusive, and innovative congregations. These are churches and people and faith communities that are growing on the vine of the living Christ. What we've come to develop over the last few years is kind of a framework to help us to recognize what this movement looks like. So we've identified several characteristics that we believe embody vital congregations. I invite you to um, think about your own church, and uh, what I invite you to do is to, as you're experiencing this, these list of characteristics, is not to maybe check off, oh, we do that, or oh, we do that. Instead, to wonder in ways, uh, what ways are you already doing it, and begin to also wonder how you could be doing that characteristic even more. John Wesley always talks about the fact that we, we never get there in terms of our life of faith. We're always moving on to perfection. There's always something more that we can grow into. It's no different in our churches. None of us ever get there. There's always something else, something more that we can grow and push ourselves to be. So we start with this first characteristic, and it's called koinonia um, community. And this particular characteristic means fostering a Christ-centering community that's reminiscent of the early church in Acts 2. These are churches that practice radical hospitality and form loving accountability groups with one another. I heard about one this morning that's starting up next week. There's these small group things, places where we can get together with other people and actually go a little bit deeper in our lives of faith, talk about what it looks like to actually live out our faith every day with other people and then begin to shift and change our lives accordingly. The other piece of this koinonia um, community characteristic is they embody um, a welcoming spirit that embraces a growing diversity across all demographics of people, and they offer a place for everyone to belong. Koinonia culture is all about nurture and care and growth and radical hospitality of welcoming people no matter where they've been, no matter what they've done, um, and just providing them a place to be and to experience and to explore the body of Christ. The second characteristic is an intentional discipling culture. That's because spirituality matters, my friends. Vital churches are dedicated to growing to be more like Jesus, both individually and corporately. These churches use the means of grace through acts of justice and compassion and devotion and worship. And more than that, they expect transformation through the Holy Spirit. These folks actually expect to be different than they were before because they're engaging and being embodied with the living Christ each and every day. These churches also provide clear pathways for living out this visible pathway and this visible faith to other people every single day. Folks can walk into these churches and start to see other people are growing, and there's a clear pathway for somebody else to figure out where they need to start their faith journey and take another step and take another step after that. Our third characteristic is being outward focused. Vital churches prioritize the needs of the community over their own. That means when they come and start making decisions, they actually consider the needs of their community at a higher priority than their internal needs of things that they want and would prefer and desire. These churches embody a radical generosity in giving what they've been entrusted with and giving in the ways that they choose to love their neighbors without limit. They are known for actively meeting community needs at the exact place where their own resources can have the greatest impact. The fourth characteristic is a church that has a clear and compelling mission, vision, and values. These mission, vision, and values are articulated and communicated clearly. They ensure that they are understood both within and outside the congregation. 
People both inside the church know it. I heard it this morning as you guys um, said out loud your mission statement. That was pretty cool. I really like that. Um, as you continue to grow, uh, I wonder how many outs, people outside your church are also familiar with that and know what it means and can see it when it comes to life. These churches then take that mission, vision, and values, and they structure their church um, in such a way that that is what they are producing. Their leadership structures are specifically organized to bring their vision to life. The fifth characteristic is vibrant worship. In vital churches, worship is passionate and inspiring. It's designed to be relevant and meaningful to everyone that it touches. It's spirit-filled and it's varied. And it's continually leading participants to a deeper engagement with their faith. Worship is not just something that is done on a Sunday or a Saturday or whatever day of the week that the formal worship service is. It's something that each person strives to look for and participate in every single day. It's a way to commune with God and to give thanks and praise to God, and it becomes a part of the way that we live our lives. And we also choose to gather corporately and to give thanks to God and to be inspired so that we might go out and live and pursue even more of what it looks like to be the body of Christ together. The sixth characteristic is churches that are innovative and adaptable. Vital churches embrace a church-wide culture of spirit-led risk-taking. Their leaders are committed to being adaptive, always learning and adjusting to serve their mission effectively. They're willing to try new things. They're willing to step out in faith. They're willing for things to not work, but to learn from what they tried and to try again. It's heading out into the world with the spirit of Christ, not knowing exactly what's going to happen, but knowing that the living Christ has given us everything we need to adapt and to adjust to the world that's around us as we continue to live out that gospel story. The seventh characteristic are faithful pastoral and lay leadership. These are churches that are guided by leaders who are led first and foremost by the Holy Spirit. These are clergy and lay leaders in vital churches that are committed to and collaborate consistently with one another. They are highly equipped. They continually try to get better. They are also organized around their vision and the principles of the United Methodist Way and the United Methodist Way of Life. These are leaders who are working together not to create a fiefdom of their own, but to come together to create and further the kingdom of God in their community and in their place. It takes leaders who first and foremost know who Jesus is and are doing everything they can to follow where Jesus is leading. The eighth and final characteristic are churches that um, are faithfully using the assets and resources that God has blessed them with. Vital churches practice sustainability in leadership and finances. They leverage all of their resources, including their relationships, their buildings, their property, and all other assets that they've been gifted with. They maximize their impact by deeply investing in community networks and partnerships. Now, while no church excels at all of these traits all at one time, effective faith communities are strong in several and constantly trying to improve in the others. This framework provides a common vision for all of us to seek to be a spiritual movement of church and to grow similar branches and to bear fruit in the world around us. This is what it's like to cultivate a life with Christ life with each other, and life with the world. And for me in our office over the next year, we're going to delve deeper into each one of these characteristics through a monthly Zoom. We started um, back in August, and we had one um, the second week in September. They will always be the second Monday of, of each month uh, from now through April. And now last week, or last month, we started with the first characteristic, which was a community, a community. 
uh, uh, next month, uh, the second Monday in October, uh, we'll be taking on a discipling community or a discipling culture, and we'll take just an hour. It's on Zoom. Um, I'll usually have somebody else, uh, a leader or a couple of leaders from a church who is currently engaged and trying to grow in that particular characteristic. We'll go a, a lot deeper into, uh, into that characteristic and talk about it, um, and it's something that you all can participate in if you want to. They'll also be recorded. You can go back, and uh, some churches are using it as a way to uh, continue to help their leadership grow and to discover and to understand what vital churches look like, um, but it's a way that we're trying to reinforce and to help churches understand what it means and what it looks like to be healthy and vital and sustainable. Our goal is to help every church access what they need, including you, to cultivate vitality in your context. We hope that these resources will help you to discern with the Spirit where you are and where you might want to focus more of your energy to continue strengthening your vitality and your sustainability. The vine continues to grow because we discover that we are always, or we always have room to grow just a little bit more. There's always room for more fruitfulness from the Holy Spirit to spill out into the world so that somebody else can grow and discover and experience what it means to be loved by the living Christ. For you all, um, you have already engaged in Transformation Journey, uh, which is one of the um, tangible ways that we help churches do this work. Um, And we're always trying to grow and improve that as well. Uh, You guys started the process a few years ago. I know you're you're actually kind of moving on to almost a 2.0 as you're working. I know you just started with the Ormond Center and the uh, Placemaker Lab, and I'm going to really start considering uh, a lot deeper questions about how to use your that eighth characteristic that I talked about. You know, a faithful use of your assets and processes, and I'm excited to see where God goes with that. As new churches uh, experience transformation journey these days, now we've tied each one of the recommendations um, that they receive uh, to one or two or three of these characteristics so they can see how working on that particular uh, recommendation is going to help them grow uh, to be a more vital uh, and healthy congregation. Uh, I went back and looked at you all's uh, original transformation journey, and uh, you had things listed like di- uh, doing a deep dive into spiritual practices and to clarify your mission, vision, and values. Uh, I sat in a, cu- a couple of those conversations as you were working on that. Um, you were here to fine-tune your leadership team. If you think about that, that, that hits um, that number seven uh, and orienting our leadership team around uh, the mission and vision that's there. You had listed door-to-door core to discipleship pathway, which was that number two uh, characteristic, and reaching younger generations. You guys are already at work in this and have done some significant things uh, uh, towards that work. Uh, and I just invite you and encourage you to continue on in finding that next thing and the next way that God wants to grow you and your congregation to be a little bit more like Jesus. As we equip ourselves to be a spiritual movement instead of just an organization, as we seek to cultivate these characteristics, vital and sustainable churches will be seen and felt. They will provide an unmistakable liveliness and be a critical presence in each one of our communities. Our United Methodist um, churches will continue to become indispensable not because we serve ourselves, but because we unreservedly choose to serve others, and we choose to live out a visible faith every day. That's because fruitfulness matters. Friends, I close with um, these words from Galatians 5. It's probably familiar to many of you, verses 22 and 23, and Um, I invite this to be a prayer for you and for you to to hear and discover and and have stirred up in you some of the fruit that the Holy Spirit wants to continue to stir up and grow in you. Hear these words from Paul as as we close uh, this morning together. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, And self control. There is no law against these things. For those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to his cross and crucified them there. Since we are living by the Spirit, 
Let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Let us pray. Holy and loving God, we give you thanks and praise for choosing to lead us with your Spirit. God, attune our hearts and our minds in the way that we live our lives to you so that we can see you and feel you and hear you and know you and follow you more each and every day. God, help us to discover what it looks like to be a church of not just people who gather together as a church, but a group of people who gather together because of your spirit and follow that spirit into the world with a sense of spiritual movement and purpose and understanding. God, grow us as only you can as we continue to experience what it looks like and what it means to be a vine that keeps growing. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.